Okay, um, here is the 90% partially assembled CNC machine. I'll go over in a minute uh, what's left to do. But uh, what I wanted to point out, sorry for the way my finger is going to do, is down here you got the table bottom, the table top, the gantry side. Here's one over here, a gantry side. Then you have part O, which goes across. It's the Y axis rail support. And uh, sitting here is the Z axis, which is going to move up and down on part F, which is that piece right there. And this whole thing will move side to side along the uh, part O right there. And then again, this whole contraption will move front and back along the table. Let me show you how this is going to work. Here's the Z axis. It moves very smoothly up and down on the rails. The router will be mounted right here in the center. And there'll be another large hole cut right here where your dust collection system. If you have a, a wet dry vac, you could put the, uh, the nozzle in there. Now, here is part F and part O, or what they call the Y-axis rail support. This piece moves very smoothly back and forth. And then, if I zoom back a little more, this whole piece rides along the rails on the tabletop, or the X-axis. Now, here's a couple things I want to point out to you. <coughs> you may see a couple mistakes here and there. We drilled a hole here and here, accidental. Uh, we were thinking that would be used to mount the rail. Wrong! The rail is held by a bolt that goes into a hole here. There are seven holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's correct. We, actually, we drilled seven holes here. No big deal. You see this hole right here? This is one of the parts I told you that we haven't finished yet. This is a large hole is going to be drilled here for a bearing. This is where one of the, one of the uh, uh, lead screws is going to go through. Uh, a motor will be mounted on this side or the other side. We haven't made our mind up yet. And that screw is what will move this piece back and forth like this. Now up here, right here in the center, there's going to be another hole drilled. There will be a motor mounted up here. A screw will go through it to the bottom, and that screw and motor is what will control this going up and down like this. And then finally, up here on the front, you see that hole. There's a matching one on the back back there, but you can't see it. A screw will go all the way through here, a motor mounted up front, and that will go underneath here, and there'll, it'll, um, there'll be a part that's bolted to this bottom piece down here, part P, and it's not mounted yet. And it, a screw will go through it, and it will cause this piece to move front and back like that. Now, <clears throat> a couple more things I want to show you. To get this Z-axis piece wrapped around this axis right here, you have to, uh, the, the book and, the video, and some other videos will show you how we uh, did that. But you see this piece right here and this piece right here. Once you attach these and tighten them down, this whole thing can get really super tight on the rails where it won't roll that easily. So what we did, and you can't really see them in this video, but I did take some pictures that will be in the book. Between this piece and this piece, and this piece and this piece, there's a spacer, a washer, that we inserted underneath here. The bolt that goes up in and into this cross dowel, the washer is sitting between these two pieces and you can't see it, it's covered up. But that spacer, the thickness of it, was just enough to cause this piece and the top piece to be just that much further apart and to release pressure on, this, on these bearings so that they glide smoothly. It's called shimming, and again, I'll mention it in the book, and I'll tell you where we did it with some pictures. Um, but just know that when you get this part wrapped around part, uh, this piece right here, part O, that uh, if it's super tight, you can add washers just to give yourself that little extra space to give this uh, freedom of movement. And all in all, we're pretty happy with it. What we've got left to do, like I said, is to drill the motor mount holes here and down there, the one up top and the one down bottom, and then of course the one up here on the front and the matching one on back. And uh, we'll be adding the motors. And when we're done, we'll have a CNC machine.